Karen O'Shaughnessy is the executive director of the Lookout Emergency and Aid Society, which opened its first shelter on Vancouver Skid Row 40 years ago. She herself has been on the street and escaped the street. It is my pleasure to welcome Karen O'Shaughnessy to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you. Thank you very, very much, Penny. How long have you been doing this? Oh, well, it's uh, over 40 years. Over 43. 40 years. Yeah, I was a kid when uh, helping kids in a youth shelter um, and then moved over to, uh, to Lookout, which is mm. actually one of those uh, youth employment programs that the uh, federal government initiated in the, mm -hmm. late, the late 60s. And before you were helping, you were running away. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Why? Take me back. Well, um, pretty sad family life, lived in poverty, um, abusive father, so uh, yeah, I, I escaped. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did that, I stayed with friends, I couch surfed, I did what you needed to do to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. And what so. was surviving like then, as opposed to now? Ooh. Um, it's harder now than, than it was then. I mean, then you could hitchhike across the country, as I did uh, mm -hmm. numerous times, and, um, but there was still a bit of a, uh, a respect for, for women, and uh, the violence was not as great. Um, there is a lot of violence now. And, um, but, but having said that, I mean, it was extremely tough, and um, I virtually know anybody who survived those times. Did you go through times when uh, uh, people tried to lure you into sex trade, uh, knowing that you were alone and... Oh, absolutely. Um, um, you know, I had choices. I mean, I had many people giving me drugs. Um, I um, had friends that actually saved me from, uh, from addiction. Um, I had uh, people trying to get me into the sex trade. I had people who... Uh, um, just wanted to take advantage of this mm -hmm. uh, vulnerable young, young girl, young 14. Girl. Yeah, and uh, and I, I just I kept running, and I think the only thing that kept me, um, the only thing that made me survive that is um, I had at that point uh, a fairly deep hatred of men, and uh, and so I couldn't I couldn't get into to the drugs. I, mm -hmm. I needed to protect myself, or felt like I had to protect myself. Um, and uh, I wasn't prepared to rely on men. I wanted to be, look after myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was quite, I was quite angry. Who supported you then? Did you have a sister, a best friend, uh, a mother? Street people. Someone? Street people. It was uh, other street people and, 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 uh, and a few friends that uh, mm -hmm. I developed along the way. Yeah, that was quite transient for a number of years, so. Yeah. I have never uh, lived on the street, but I have talked to people who have, and they suggest there is a sense of family, finally. If you flee an abusive alcoholic father or you, an abusive family, you, and you find some solace, in spite of the horrible circumstances having to live on the street, you find some solace and some friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I remember a, a period of time I couldn't eat. I couldn't uh, couldn't get any food, and um, I didn't want to steal. Um, and there was one point um, I was walking up and down the uh, the aisles in front of the cheese. I love cheese to this day. Mm -hmm. I love cheese, and um, I, I you know I wanted. I was so hungry. I had been kicked out of a restaurant prior to that um, where I had ordered um, a pot of tea, but only the water. And then I'd used ketchup in it and made myself some soup. And uh, in the restaurant, uh, the waitress booted me out because I was one of those mm. bums. And uh, so there I was in, in, um, in front of the cheese uh, bars and seeing all of this food. And I was so hungry. And I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to, to steal. And of course, if I had, it probably would have mm -hmm. stuck out like a sore thumb. But anyway, people who were on the street who were extremely hungry as well, they took me and they fed me, and they didn't ask for anything in return, nothing in return. They were so generous. And you know, through my life, through, through all of the time, over the, the 40 years now, working with people who are homeless, that generosity still amazes me, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how we are all meant to be, really, yeah. to help our fellow man. 
Yes. We're not so good at that at times. So uh, when Mayor Gregor Robertson says uh, he will eliminate street homelessness, it is his pledge uh, by 2015. Yep. I'm not sure what date he gave. And many others have, have wanted to and attempted to. What are the hurdles? Well, I mean, first of all, the, uh, the resources, mm -hmm. right? Um, the getting um, the senior levels of government involved. Um, um, BC has been outstanding in continuing a housing supply program um, like Quebec, and, but it's the only, the only province that has, but our senior level of government does not have a housing supply program any longer mm. other than um, very three-year cyclical sure. um, grants. So I think he, he needs the resources. Uh, the city cannot do it on their, on their own. And, uh, and then people. You know, the, uh, the population of, uh, of the city has to be willing to, to accept people in their community who, who may not necessarily look exactly the same way they do. Mm -hmm. And that is often a problem. As you know, I know it's controversial, this new housing, the Atira. Is it Atira? Yes. Uh, 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 Janice Abbott's project yeah. uh, wants to house teenage girls in a downtown hotel, not not, wasn't such a nice hotel now refurbished in the downtown east side to help teenage girls get off the street. It's controversial. Uh, some people say you should not house young girls down there because they'll get picked up by pimps and lured away. How do you feel about it? You know, you have to create the housing where people are, where they're feeling comfortable with, and after they, after they make that transition. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when you can start saying to them, well, there's an opportunity to move into housing in such and such an area, right. if the housing exists. But you have to be where they are, and you have to meet them where they're at at the moment. And, and, and only then are they gonna be willing to come in See, off the street. See, it makes sense to me. You could say, well, we'll put you on a bus to Shaughnessy, they won't stay. But they won't stay. I didn't stay, so why would they stay? I you know. know. And not only that, the, some of the people, in Sh and not to pick on Shaughnessy, but any neighborhood would say, so what's going on here? Who are these people? You know, the, not, the, the NIMBY problem. Well, and well, exactly. And yet, you know, what I keep trying to, to educate people about is the, the homeless is a diverse group of people. You know, they mm. are people's sons and daughters and mothers and, and, and brothers and uncles. Um, you know, the only commonality, really the only commonality is poverty. And the rest of it is, you know, yes, there's people who have mental health issues. Yes, there's people with addiction issues. Yes, there's people with chronic physical health issues. Um, increasingly, there's seniors who, who are, are homeless. It is, you know, um, a, a whole raft of different kinds mm -hmm. of services and different different answers mm -hmm. that we need to provide for folks. And different lives because there are yes. people homeless, you talk to them uh, daily, yeah. who uh, once uh, had a great job, great life, great yes. family, and lost it all. Absolutely, but for the grace, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and providing people with the opportunity to get in off the street um, opens that doors a, a, a possibility to them again. Um, I had a fellow, this is uh, one Christmas, who, who came in and uh, had been coming back for five years, he told me, and um, he said that he handed me a, a donation. He said, listen, that he had been one of the, uh, the most incorrigible ugly drunks in the, uh, in the downtown east side, and we kept on taking him in and putting him on our couch. And he said, you know, at one point, we got him into detox, we got him into services, and, and what happened is he went on, he sobered up, he cleaned up, he got a job, he got a family, mm -hmm. he got remarried, he got a house, and uh, making good dollars. Right. And he said, you know, he ha just had to come back, and if it hadn't been for Lookout, he, 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 would not have, he would not have survived.